Welcome back to Vernon Speakeasy. Hello. We are going to walk you through some of the basic essentials and some of the needs of bitters. And not even that, we're talking medieval times. Bitters have been around for longer than many of our ancestors can even track. So if we're thinking of bitter flavors, where would you say that that kind of derives from or where would the bitters be in a sense? Is it the alcohol itself or what would it be? Uh, it comes down to a specific root called gentian root that adds the, the bitter effect that so many Apartifs and actual bitters like Peixo, Zangostura, um, Apartifs like Campari or Aperol, it, it's what gives it that red color, it's what gives it that bitterness that gets you in the back of your mouth. There we go, so it's the actual root itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not even necessarily the alcohol that's input, which can help, but it has to do with the main base root that's being influenced in our bitters at least for classic bitters. Now, people go into a lot of different things. You know, I've seen celery, I've seen rhubarb, I've seen many, many different types of bitters. But if we're talking classics, she's right on it. I think one of the most important parts of bitters is the aromatics. Absolutely. You know, when we're doing aromatics, I think that the smell coming off of it, it's just like smelling your food before you go in to dig in. You smell your cocktail whether you realize it or not. And those aromatics off bitters, oh gosh, especially when you start playing around with uh, these different bitter blends like Tony has made. Really helps things out. So we've started a batch of house-made bitters that yes. we're trying out for the first time. Uh, this is our first batch and as you can see it's all cloudy and full of herbs that are just floating loose in there. And we'll let it sit for three weeks. We have let it sit for three weeks. Today is the big day that we're going to strain it yes. off and uh, we're going to boil the sediment with some water and then recombine it with a touch of sweetener to continue the ferment process as it sits but we're going to filter all the sediment out today yes and uh, this one in particular as far as all the aromatics and everything like logan was talking about um, we went with a really uh, local variety of herbs so we're here in albuquerque new Always mexico stick to local. we're in the ha uh, the high desert area and there are incredible uh, just roots and herbs that we can use out here that can really influence the taste of a cocktail and make it something uniquely ours or unique to our region yes. and that's kind of what I was going for here so we have like local herbs Those like yerba smells. mansa, we have osha root, we have a local meadow fringe gentian root. So be sure and look out because like Tony's telling you guys there is awesome stuff in here you can go off your local backgrounds as Tony has told me and taught me this is all tonic based as well. It's, so it's not just about bitters. It's medicinal. Yep. And it goes back, like Logan said, back to our ancestors back in the Middle Ages. Yes. Here um, in prehistoric times, even, you know, people knew how to ferment and they knew how to preserve herbs and use herbs for medicinal purposes. And yes. so a lot of these, um, while they do activate your appetite and stimulate digestion, which is the point of gentian and a few of the other things. There are some others that'll help for seasonal things like the Coda, the Navajo tea that I put in there. Yes. It really helps with allergy season, helps open up your respiratory system and soothe your throat. So it's not only going to be adding levels of flavor, it's almost like adding levels of tender loving care to your drink. 100%. You hear about eating local honey takes care of your allergies. It kind of does the same thing with local herbs. Mm -hmm. So local bitters, local flavors, good aromatics off of there as well. It all plays into bitters. Something that's very important to know about your bitters too is balance, 100%. You can make something too bitter, you can make something too floral, too aromatic, you can just kind of go too heavy in any direction whether you're dealing with just bitters or infusions, cocktails, anything. So you wanna make sure that you've got a good balance going across and a lot of that has to play in the makeup of the actual cocktail as well. So say for instance, you're working with an old fashioned that has a decent amount of sweetener in there, you might want a little bit more of those bitters going into it. But if you're dealing with a Manhattan that yes, has sweet vermouth, it might not be as sweet as it's labeled as sweet vermouth. So you might want a couple of less dashes in there because you've already got a bitter cocktail and you only really want a little bit more aromatic and just a light flavor enhancer on there because you won't have to fight anything or cut anything. We wanna make sure we understand what we're making for our guests and what we're making for our cocktails in general. 
You know, we're talking about the importance of prohibition, we're talking about how much of an influence that it had on cocktails, but we often don't talk about how much it took away from us and what we really don't get to experience because of how limited that entire market really became. So a lot of these early things were really taken out and they were just... They completely disappeared as a brand. Yeah. Uh, like there are flavor profiles that we'll never know existed just yes. because distilleries were shut down during prohibition and they were unable to continue making some of those things and a lot of, uh, I mean, 13 years is a long time. You saw how many bars and cocktail programs are lost because of COVID. Can you imagine 13 years of that? Yes. Ooh, so. so, but then luckily we get to jump in like we've done. We get to make our own bitters and our own fun. So some of these brands, some of these flavors you might not be able to taste. If you come to Vernon's, you might get a little taste of something special. That sounded dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That sounded dirty. Uh. With the cocktail culture revival that is happening again with, you know, house made bitters or all the different flavors that you can find from companies like Fee Brothers or The Bitter Truth, um, I mean, the possibilities are endless. So mm -hmm. really, I don't know, grab a mason jar, start spell batching your own things, discover some flavors. You can even just use it with tonic water or soda water and have like a nice little spritzer in the afternoon. You don't even have That's to get... Right. Like, super alcoholic on it, exactly. like old-fashioned. We talked about those it. aromatics and the literal flavors, the aromatics especially. If you're just doing bitters and soda water, you will smell that. and It will be something that's really prevalent. It's mm -hmm. not like an after flavor, an afterthought. It's a very nice, refreshing thing. And it's really nice if you're hungover. <laughs> hey, we know that's a bartender secret. Tony, that is you can't a bartender say those secret. Things. Bitters God. and soda water if you're hungover. Or you just have a little indigestion. Yeah, a little indigestion yeah. too. All right, well, thank you guys for joining Vernon Speakeasy yet again. Be sure to like and subscribe down below. Follow us on all of our social media and get a reservation. You're missing out by not getting a reservation. I'm telling you, stop messing up. Come to Vernon's. Get in here. <laughs>